All right, let's now do an example with polynomials. In this example, we'll do a couple of things a little bit differently. First of all, instead of computing a simple sum of two vectors, we'll compute a slightly more complicated linear combination. Also, we'll pretend that this problem is just a little bit too complicated to be solved without the help of component spaces. So we'll actually simulate what typically happens in real life. We're faced with a problem that's just a little bit too complicated. So we pick a basis, convert all of the elements of the problem to component space, solve the problem, let's say rather easily in component space. And then finally, once we've obtained the components of the answer, translate them back into a real life answer. And of course, in this problem, we're only pretending that it's too complicated to be solved without the help of component spaces. So we'll be able to confirm that our strategy indeed led us to the correct answer. And if you'd like to, you can pause the video and actually calculate this linear combination of these two polynomials without any use of bases. But we'll introduce a basis. I have, I'm holding an orange chalk. So here's the basis that we will use. It will consist of x squared plus x plus 1, then x plus 1, and finally the simple constant polynomial 1. All right, this is our basis. We could have chosen any other one, but chose this one just to illustrate the points that we're trying to illustrate, not too complicated, not too simple of a basis. So let's decompose the polynomial p with respect to this basis. And we find that p equals, and once again, you may have to review decomposition a little bit, but this is our bootstrapping approach to decomposing polynomials. So we'll find that to get 3x squared, we need to take 3 of this polynomial. And then, of course, there is no x here, so we have to cancel x with this polynomial. So we have to take negative 3 of this polynomial. So with, for the free term, we so far have 3 minus 3, and so we have to take negative 5. So it's 3, negative 3, and finally negative 5 of this polynomial. So p equals 3, negative 3, and negative 5. Okay, and once again you may say, well this looks a little bit funny because it equates a polynomial to a set of numbers, and of course a polynomial is not a set of numbers. And once again, maybe the words it represented by or is equivalent to is a little bit better. But of course, it's this sub B that saves the day because what it says is that P, the polynomial, equals negative 3 of this polynomial plus, excuse me, equals 3 of this polynomial minus 3 of this polynomial minus 5 of this polynomial. So here on the right hand side, we have a linear combination of polynomials, even though at first, Sight, it looks like a set of numbers, but no, it's a linear combination of polynomials. So that's P. And now for Q, similar exercise, Q will equal, once again, with respect to the polynomial B. All right, so we have to match, to match X squared, we have to take one of this. Then to match X, we already have X from here, so negative two. Now for the free terms, we have one minus two, that's minus one. So eight, so one, negative two, eight. One, negative two, eight. And our problem has therefore been translated into the component space. So we can now solve this problem rather easily in the component space. And of course, three P plus two Q, which is what our problem is, equals and now we just have to find this linear combination of these two vectors in R3. Okay, and I think I can do it in one step. It will be 11. And so we have negative three, negative minus nine, minus four, negative 13. Let's make sure, minus nine, minus four, negative 13. And in the final spot we have minus 15 plus 16, minus 15 plus 16, so one. And once again, this is not the answer to our problem, it's the components of the answer to our problem. So to complete the problem, we now have to convert this 
back to a quote unquote real life vector. I think it'll be long and I'm switching back to white chalk because this will now be a real life answer. Even though it will come from these components, it's still uh, the answer itself will be independent of the basis and the components that we were working with. Okay, so this step, I never introduced this very nice word that can describe this step and that word is synthesis. Because going from this world to the world of component spaces is done by decomposition, taking something apart, representing a vector with respect to a basis. And now that we have our answer that represents coefficients of a linear combination with respect to the same basis, we have to put it back together. We have to take 11 of this minus 13 of this element and finally plus this element. So put it back together. So synthesis, building rather than decomposing. All right, so let's go power by power. So let's copy those numbers here just to make it a little bit easier. So it'll be 11, ah, this should be orange. 11, negative 13, and one. So going power by power, we have 11 X squared. And then now let's add up the X's. 11 minus 13 minus two X. And we have 11 minus 13, it's minus two plus one. Let's just make sure minus two plus one. So minus one, and that's our real life answer. So we have completed our three step journey of starting with the real life problem, picking a basis. Step number one, translate into the component space. Step number two, solve the problem in the component space. Step number three, interpret the components of the answer as the answer in the real world. And finally, because this problem wasn't too complicated to do uh, without the help of, of, a, of a basis. We can actually go ahead and make sure that this answer was correct. That this linear combination, I'll forget about all of the component space business. And let's just make sure that this linear combination actually equals this polynomial. So once again, let's go power by power. 9x squared plus 2x squared is 11x squared. And then for the powers of x, nothing from here, minus 2x, great. And then finally for the free coefficient, minus 15 plus 14, minus one. So yes, our strategy, our three-step journey does work. And it does help us solve a problem that's potentially too complicated to be solved in the real world. It helps us solve it rather easily in the component world. So this was our second example and it involved polynomials.